may be able to pick him up, madam. Uh, broad, stout, and middle-aged, eh? Yes, and he hadn't shaved. You said he had a bristly chin, didn't you, darling? Oh, that's right, he had a bristly chin. Oh, and he was wearing a soft hat. It was a soft hat, wasn't it, Muriel? Muriel, dear. Oh, well, anyway, he had a hat on. See what I mean, Ernie? Strategy. The art of surprise. Hiya, Charlie. They tell me the anchor's find you here. Yeah. Last orders, gents. I'm fat. I've got something in your line, Charlie. Put that away. Last orders. What's the joke? Two double scotches. All right, all right. Two bitters. What's the matter with your flashing stuff like that? Joe's all right. Yes, Joe's all right. Sid's all right. Fred's all right. And Dartmoor's full. Hop it. If you've got something to get rid of, bring it round tomorrow morning in the proper manner. You guys should take a tip from that. I shall probably lose money on the deal as it is. Mm, it's always the same. The artist never gets the due reward of his labours. So long. So long. Morning, Charlie. What do you want? We're looking for a little lost property. <laughs> I haven't got any. Why come to me? Well, you know how it is, Charlie. We know you, you know us. Uh, show him the warrant, Sergeant. Well, this seems to have broken, Charlie. I think we're in for a cold spell. Looks like it. Prisoner at the bar. You are indicted in that you, on or about the 20th of April, 1942, did receive a gold watch and jewel locket to the value of 30 pounds, the property of Mary Frances Jones, well knowing the same to have been stolen. Tonight, aren't you? Yeah, well, I had to get the old woman off of the pictures. You know, she's been reading the papers too much lately. Getting on my nerves. <laughs> Nagging you, eh? Okay, Alf. Okay, Carl. Ah, oh, women are always the same, full of objections. Yeah, I know. But my customers are women. Hurry up, Alf. We haven't got all night. Sorry, old man. We've got to cut you down a bit this time. What for? Oh, we're having a lot of trouble with supplies. Things are getting very hot down at the docks. Do you know the last lot that we pinched for... Now, look, I don't want to know how you get it. That's your affair. All I want to do is to please my customers. That's a lot, Gov. Well, we'll try and do better for you on Monday. Well, I hope so. This little lot won't go far. Morning. Good morning, madam. Morning. Went a bit fresh this morning. Uh, George, um, Mrs. Wilson's joint. And uh, how's Mr. Wilson? Oh, full of the war, as usual. <coughs> I say, that's not my bit, is it? Well, surely that can't be all I get on two books. Well, I'm afraid so, Mrs. Wilson. But I don't know. I really don't know. What shall I do for the rest of the week? I suppose you... Well, uh, of course, I might be able to... Um, oh, could you? Could you really? Find you. Strictly speaking, I... Oh, yes, I know the regulations make you sick. I don't know where we'd be if some of you didn't make exceptions now and again. Besides, when you've got it left over... Now, you take my friend. I don't want to mention any names, but she's registered up the road, you know, Mr. B. But he says he has meat left over every Saturday, just waiting to go bad. But it don't wait long. Well, there you are, you see. Do you know he lets my friend have a fine joint of beef every week, nearly? And why shouldn't he? What does the government expect him to do with it? Shove it in the fridge. Here, yeah, George. Serve this kid. Really, the way some children are brought up. Now, look, could you possibly make it a little bit extra? I don't care what it is. Anything will do. Anything. If you refuse to buy the goods, the thief would find no point in stealing them. The law recognizes this truth by laying down heavier penalties for the receiver as the instigator of the crime. 
I don't know whether you're at all acquainted with natural history. I don't profess to be a student of it myself outside this court. But I cannot help being reminded as I look at you of some of the more disagreeable manifestations of the insect world. In the world in which we live, you prey upon our society. If it were not for you and similarly unpleasant specimens, thieves could not make a living. You create the demand. You offer the market. You are the real criminal. <laughs> Yes, Mrs. Wilson, you're quite right. It is one of those propaganda pictures. And it's coming to you by direct transmission without the slightest courtesy from the British public. Let you and others like you, whether you buy or sell, who have seized the opportunities offered by a war, which is a war for life, yes, for life, to line your pockets, your cupboards, or your stomachs on the miserable and illogical plea of if I don't, someone else will. Let those of you consider just exactly who and what you are, and whether you're any better than common criminals, parasites, preying on the body of a community at war. And it's no good saying, I only took a little. If everybody in this country took only a little more than their fair share, we should all of us be starving in a very short while. Remember that, won't you, ladies and gentlemen? 